there nation and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Chiefsgate, and we are back another episode of Commander Chiefsgate Game Reviews. And on today's episode, we are going to take a look at the latest edition of the Zombie Pirates of the Vampire Coast Army book for Warhammer Army's Project 9th Edition Warhammer Fantasy. Once again, this is another project that's created by the Warhammer Armies Project, which is a blogger site that is moderated by Matthias Eliason. And he's actually made not only 9th edition rules for Warhammer Fantasy Battle, but he's also made army books for every single faction in that setting. He's also made army books for factions that have never received army books on their own. For example, the Zombie Pirates of the Vampire Coasts. So what we'll be doing is we'll be going over the army products rules with the army rules, their special characters, their magic and magical items, as well as our army lists. And we will provide our overall conclusion on this product at the same time because this one will be a little bit more of a deeper dive if you look down in the description box down below i do have timestamps to the various sections of the book so you can navigate through the video as you need so with that being said let's get this review on a roll All right, so as you can see, we're on my desktop with my awesome Commander Chiefsgate logo, and here is the product we are reviewing, the Zombie Pirates of the Vampire Coast by Matthias Eliasson's Warhammer Armies Project. As you can see, just like always, just another beautiful job of the desktop publishing on this army book. Once again, just really, really appreciate what my Matthias Eliasson has done for his work as well as for this project. He does a beautiful job with it. As you can see here, we have the uh, Dread Sea, I believe is the name of the game. Dreadfleet, there we go, that's the name of the game. This is a board game called Dreadfleet. Dreadfleet was a short-lived tabletop miniatures war game that was created by Games Workshop. It featured naval combat between different mercenaries, pirates, as well as Imperial forces, human forces, against the undead. And this is where actually most of the inspiration from the Vampire Coast comes from, is from the Dreadfleet game. Uh, for real, real old school players, I might remember an old game called Man of War, which is an even older uh, Games Workshop IP, which was featured naval warfare between the different nations of the old world set in Warhammer Fantasy. So you can see this is the uh, Dreadfleet map from that as well. And once again, just another beautiful job the desktop publishing. As you can see, they got these beautiful banner images on the sides. Beautiful artwork as well. My Thias license version 1.3. So let's take a look at the contents. So we're not going to spend too much time on the fluff of the Vampire Coast and its history. Um, just to give you guys just a quick little introduction about how it works. Pretty much this is the undead version of the Pirates of Sartosa for the most part. These are pirates from the Vampire Coast that was located along Lustria, as well as the oceans between the New World as well as the Old World and the undead forces in between. Now we will be going over the army special rule as well as this bestiary. We'll be taking a look at their special characters, their magic items and their magic uh, lores, as well as taking a look at their armor fit, armory list and then giving you our overall impression. So let's go and start with the army rules first of all. So, they have a couple of special rules. As you can see, they have the Undead, Vampiric, as well as Red Thirst, and Generals of Undeath rules. Same thing with Slain Generals and Battle Sanders. These are exactly the same rules that they had in previous editions with the uh, Vampire Counts, as well as Characters and Units. But now we have this new rule called Zombie Pirate. It says, any model of the special rule that uses a missile weapon that require a roll to hit will always hit on a roll of five, regardless of any modifiers. However, any rolls of one will result in the gun misfiring, result in hit against the unit, uh, firing the unit against uh, instead of the target. So it looks like you get shot at by your own vehicle, or your own weapons, if you're not careful on that part. All right, so let's go and start with Vampire Fleet Captain. So these look like these are your Vampire versions. So we have a Fleet Admiral as well as Fleet Captain. The Admirals have Movement 6, Weapon Skill 7, Ballista Skill 5, Tough and Strength 5, 3 Wounds, 7 Initiative, 4 Attacks, 10 Leadership. The Captains look like it's got pretty much the same stats. Uh, 6 Movement, 6 Weapon Skill, 4 Ballista Skill, 5 Strength, 4 Toughness, 2 Wounds, 6 Initiative, 3 Attacks, and 9 Leadership. Infantry is character, magic, vampires who are wizards use the lore of necromancy, lore of the deep, lore of shadows, or the lore of death. They have the Red Thirst as well as the Vampiric special rules. Out there we have our Gunnery Whites. It looks like these are the same kind of uh, white characters we had before with Movement 4, Weapon Skill, Blizzard Skill 4, Strength and Toughness 4, 2 Wounds, 4 Initiative, 3 Attacks, 8 Leadership. It looks like the Infantry with Undead. And that looks like the only thing they have there. Then we have Zambi Pirate uh, Deckhands. Uh, these look like your typical Infantry. Movement 4, Weapon Skill 2, Blizzard Skill 1. They have 3 Strength and Toughness, 1 Wound, 1 Initiative, 1 Attack, and 2 Leadership. And they have the Undead Special Rule attached to them as well. Then we have Zombie Pirate Gunners. So these guys have Movement 4, Weapon Skill 2, Blister Skill 1, 
three strength and toughness, one wound, one initiative, one attack, two leadership. They have infantry as well as undead and zombie pirate rules. Their equipments are grenades. They, those grenades have a range of six inches, strength of five. It looks like they have armor piercing one and quick to fire. They also looks like they have blunderbusses, which is a 12 inch range, strength three, armor piercing one, move or fire, multiple shots three, and quick to fire. It says blunderbusses do not suffer any penalties to hit for firing multiple shots or for firing at a charging enemy. So it looks really cool there as well. Then we have, it looks like we have deck gunners. These guys have movement four, weapon skill two, with skill one, three strength and toughness, one wound, one initiative, one attack, two leadership. They are undead infantry with the zombie pirate rules, and they are packing swivel guns. Uh, they have 36 inch range, strength six, arm piercing one, move or fire, and they also have a volley gun. Volley guns have the following special rules with 18 inch range, strength four, arm piercing one, move or fire with multiple shots of D6. So it looks like those are the guys who carry a little bit more of the heavier guns as well. Then we have deck droppers, which are kind of cool. They're actually fell bats that drop gun building zombies down upon their enemies. The deck dropper, the, which is the zombie, has moved four, uh, two weapon skill, one ballistic skill, three strength and toughness, one wound, one initiative, one attack, two leadership. The fell bat carrying it's got one movement as well as three weapon skills, zero ballistic skill, three strength and toughness, two wounds, three initiative, two attacks, and three leadership. It's cavalry with a fly of nine. They also have the undead as well as zombie pirate rules as well. From there we have our bloated corpses, which look like our larger infantry forces. They have movement four, two weapon skill two, one blizzard skill. They have three strength, four toughness, two wounds, one initiative, one attack, and two leadership. They're infantry with poison attacks as well as undead, and they have gaseous demise. When a bloated corpse is slain, send to the small template on the model. Any model under the template must pass a toughness test or suffer one wound, which ignores armor saves. Sounds like kind of like really cool kamikaze type units. Looks really awesome there. Then we have scurvy dogs. These look like these are our versions of dire wolves. Uh, let's see, they have movement seven, three weapon skill, uh, three strength of toughness, one wound, three initiative, one attack, three leadership. The bad dog, what to imagine is the champion, has one additional attack. They have war beasts, undead, as well as vanguard. Then we have razor tooth rats, which are our swarms. It looks like movement six, three weapon skill, zero ballistic skill, one strength, one toughness, eight wounds, four initiative, eight attacks, and three leadership, and they're also undead. Then it looks like we have animated husks. These look like these are monstrous infantry with movement six, weapon skill three, ballistic skill zero. They have five strength, four toughness, three wounds, one initiative. And it looks like they have a special attack with uh, two leadership. They're monstrous infantry and they have random attacks D3 plus one, and they're also undead. Pretty cool there. From there, it looks like we have our sirens. Our sirens have movement six, weapon skill three, ballistic skill zero, three strength and toughness, two wounds, two initiative, one attack, and five leadership. They're infantry with ethereal as well as fly six inches. They cause terror and undead, and we have the siren's call. Special attack that can be used against a single enemy unit in the shooting phase, even if the siren has march, charge, or is engaged in close combat. This attack has a range of eight inches and needs line of sight to his target. If the siren is engaged in combat, her siren's call can only target an enemy unit base contact. To resolve a siren's call, the target unit must pass a leadership test or suffer minus three to leadership until the start of the siren's next shooting phase. So it's kind of like a little bit of a change on the banshees that are that were are found in vampire counts armies. From there we have Depth Guard. Uh, these guys have movement six, weapon skill six, three ballistic skill, five strength, four toughness, one wound, five initiative, two attacks, eight leadership. The Deck Guard is their champion. Looks like the same exact stats, except they have three attacks. They are infantry as well as vampiric. So that'd be interesting. Looks like we have vampiric infantry for once in this, which looks pretty cool. After that we have the Rotting Prometheans. Running Prometheans look at their monstrous beasts uh, with movement six, three weapon skills, zero ballista skill, five strength and toughness, three wounds, one initiative, three attacks, two leadership, and looks like a zombie gunner actually marches, uh, rides on this thing with two weapon skill, one ballista skill, three strength, one initiative, one attack, leadership two. It's a monstrous beast, special rules, it's aquatic with killing blow. It's also got four of natural armor as well as undead. And the upgrade is called Gunnery Mob. It says a unit with this upgrade counts as Monstrous Cavalry. It includes two zombie gunner riders with the zombie pirate special rule. These are armed with handguns and may fire at a 360 degree angle like a crew of a chariot. Oh, kind of interesting. So it looks like these are like chariot uh, monstrous beasts, which looks pretty cool. Then we have Rotting Leviathans. These are our monsters look like with movement six, three weapon skill, zero ballistic skill. They got six strength, six toughness, six wounds, one initiative, five attack, two leadership. Zombie gunner running on the back with two weapon skill, one ballistic skill, three strength, one initiative, one attack, two leadership. It's a monster with aquatic killing blow, natural armor two up, 
undead as well as zombie pirate and it says unbearable stench. Enemy units in base contact when they model this special rule serve minus one to their weapon skill. This has no effect on animated constructs. Pretty cool, all things considered. And then we have the Necrofex Colossus. This looks like it's got a movement of six, three weapon skills, zero blister skills, six strength and toughness, six wounds, one in initiative. Looks like it's got special attacks with eight leadership. It's got magical attacks, regeneration four up, and undead special rule. It says cannon arm. A Necrofix Colossus may make shooting attack like a cannon, even if it has moved, but not marched. And the misfire does roll, the Necrofix Colossus suffers D3 wounds. Note that it cannot fire grape shot. Then we have the Vortex of Death special rule. Any wizard attempting to cast spells from the Lore of Death or the Lore of Necromancy within 12 inches of the Necrofix Colossus gain plus one in their casting roll. And it has the Necrofix Colossus special attacks. A creature of nightmarish power and massive stature, a Necrofix Colossus can make one of a number of attacks in close combat. When it is a Necrofix's turn to strike in close combat, roll a d6 and consult the table below to determine what kind of attack it will make. We have Batter and Smash, Necroflex Glosses using the random attacks D6 plus 1 special rule. We have Impale, select one model in base contact, that model and all models in the same file. Must pass initial test or suffer strength 7 hit with the multiple D6 wound special rule. And then Screams of the Damned. Roll 2d6 and add the number of wounds the Necrofix Colossus has left. For each point by which the result exceeds the target's unit's leadership, the unit suffers one wound with no armor saves allowed. Wounds suffered from it are distributed as from shooting. Very, very cool. I like the idea that you could have a cannon arm for this thing to shoot cannons, which makes it really, really cool as well. Then we have Carronades. Looks like it's a cannon of some sort. It looks like it's got 7 to 7. It's a crew by a zombie crew with the same stats as always. War Machine Cannon. It's got the Undead Special Rule attached to it. We have Motors. Once again, Toughness 7. Looks like we have a zombie crew attached to it. Undead. It uses Storm Thrower rules. It fires Motor Shell with 12 to 48 inch range. 3 strength on the blast. 6 on the center. Armor Piercing 1. Multiple Wounds D3. The motor uses the large template. In case a misfire is rolled, consult the Black Powder War Machine misfire chart. Very cool there. And then we have Queen Bess. Looks like this is a special character uh, artillery piece. It's got Toughness 10, recruited by a zombie crew. It's a great cannon. It's got uh, special rules called Hellhammer. Queen Bess has the following profile and rules. It's got 12 to 72 inch range, strength 10, multiple wound D6 plus 1. Place the small template where the cannonball lands. Then move the template the distance the cannonball bounces. Any model under the hole serves a strength 10 hit with multiple D6 plus one special rule. Other models touched by the template suffer a strength five hit. If the misfire is rolled, add minus one to result on the black powder misfire chart and cumbersome special rule. Due to its size, Queen Best may not be moved after deployment and may pivot on the spot as normal. So yeah, that looks pretty cool. Looks like it's kind of like a limited army list, but I'm really liking the way that it's got like a bunch of unique units to it. So it looks really, really awesome as well. So now that we're done talking about the units, let's go ahead and talk about the special characters. All right, so in this section we'll be talking about these special characters. And first of all, we have Luthor Harkon, Grand Arch Commodore. So this is the character we always heard about throughout the lore of uh, Warhammer Fantasy with Luthor Harkon. He's supposed to be the vampire who inhabits a colony on the coast of Lustria. So let's talk about him real quick. So we have Luther Harkon, movement 6, weapon skill 8, 5 ballista skill, strength and toughness, 3 wounds, 7 initiative, 5 attacks, 10 leadership. He's got the Red Thirst and Vampiric special rules. He's also got Magical Void. Luther Harkon channels Dispel Dice like a level 4 wizard. In addition, he does so on a 5 plus rather than a 6. He's also got Split Personality Special Rule. It says, at the start of each of the vampire player's turns, and whenever Luthor suffers a wound, roll a d6 to determine which personality is in control. Each effect lasts until a new result is generated from the table. We have Brain Lock. Luthor follows the rules for stupidity. Mad. Luthor follows the rules for frenzy on a 4. 5 is bad. As Luthor may act normally. And then 6, dangerous to know. Luthor follows the rules for hatred. In addition, when Luther is badly wounded and the strain is too much for the dominant personality, a stronger fast himself takes over and continues the fight. Once Luthor has one wound remaining on his profile, he gains regeneration 4 plus special rule for the remainder of the turn. He's also got uh, magical items. He's got Slang Gold, which is a talisman. Gives Luther Harkon the Magic Resistance 3 special rule. Oh, that's pretty interesting there. Kind of interesting character. 
Then we have Count Noctilus, Captain of the Bloody Reaver, Admiral of the Dreadfleet. So this is the guy who basically commands the Dreadfleets in the game. Dreadfleet, which is actually kind of cool. Vampire Captain. Uh, he's got movement 6, 7 weapon skill, 5 ballista skill. He's got 5 strength and toughness, 3 wounds, 7 initiative, 4 attacks, 10 leadership. He's a level 3 wizard who can choose spells from the lore of necromancy and the lore of the shadows in any combination. Oh, any combination. That's actually kind of nice. In addition, he knows the following spell. Wraith Storm. Cast on a 10 plus. Direct damage spell. Place a large template anywhere within 18 inches. It will scatter d6 inches. Any model touched by the, uh, the template suffers a strength, a strength 3 hit. He's also got the Red Thirst and the Vampiric special rules as well. Then we have Cloistra Direfin, Siren of the Storm. Looks like she's a Siren special character, looks like. She says it looks like she has movement 6, 3 weapon skills, 0 ballista skill, 4 strength and toughness, 3 wounds, 3 initiative, 1 attack, 7 leadership. Infantry special character. She is a level 2 wizard who can choose spells in the lore of the deep. She's got the ethereal as well as fly special rule for 6 inches. She causes Terran undead and the song of enthrallment. Cloistra, uh, Cloista Diaphan has the Siren's Call special rule except it targets all enemy units within 12 inches, unless she's in close combat. She's got the Bordolo Fabellum. It's an arcane item. If Cloistra rolls a miscast, she may reroll the result on the miscast table. So far, the, the special characters seem kind of tame for the most part from what I'm seeing over here so far. All right, so we have Van Geist, Captain of the Shade Wraith, which is another uh, view, uh, another ship from the Drift Fleet game. It looks like this person's got, uh, let's see here, movement six, five weapon skills, zero ballistic skill, four strength and toughness, two wounds, three initiative, three attacks, seven leadership. And he's also accompanied by the Damned Crew, which also has movement six, three weapon skill, three strength and toughness, one wound, one initiative, one attack, and four leadership. So it looks like he comes with a unit accompanying him. He's a special character of the Ethereal and Undead rule, Dan Crew. Van Geist must include a unit of 10 to 30 Dan Crew, which costs 12 points per model and counts as a special unit. He must join this unit and may never choose to leave it during the battle. The Dan Crew are equipped with two hand weapons and have the Ethereal and Undead special rule. So yeah, so this is a character with a special uh, unit attached to him. Then we have Scritch Half Dead, Captain of the Scabrus, which is another Dreadfleet character. He's also Skaven as well. He's got movement 5, weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 4, strength and toughness 4, 2 wounds, 5 initiative, 3 attacks, 5 leadership. And it looks like he also comes with a crew as well, the Verminous crew, which costs uh, 5 movement, 2 weapon skill, 1 ballistic skill, 3 strength and toughness, 1 wound, 3 initiative, 1 attack, and 2 leadership. If you can believe it, Undead Skaven, which looks kind of interesting. They have the Undead Special Rule and the Verminous Crew. Scratch must include a unit of 20 plus Verminous Crew, which will cost 5 points per model and count as a core unit. You must join this unit and may never choose to leave it during the battle. The Verminous Crew are equipped with two hand weapons and have the Undead Special Rule. So that is pretty cool right there. So it looks like we have two characters that also have uh, crews attached to them as well. And that makes up the pretty limited special character rule list. So with the special characters over with, we will come back and talk about their lores of magic. All right, so now we're back with the lore of necromancy. It looks like it's exactly the same lore as the Vampire Counts lore from the Vampire Counts Army book. So we're not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, they have the usual spells, Invocation to Heck, Van Hell's Dance Macabre, Hellish Vigor, Gaze in the Gash, uh, Raise a Dead, Curse of Years, as well as Wind of Death. And then it looks like we also have the Lore of the Deep. So let's talk about this one. This one looks interestingly enough. I believe, yep, actually, I have seen this one. Uh, no, I've not seen this one yet. So let's go and talk about this one. So the Lord of the Deep has Kiss of Death, uh, the Deep Lore attribute. Whenever a spell from the Lord of the Deep is cast on enemy unit, the unit also suffers D6 strength one hits, which ignores armor saves in addition to the effects of the spell. So let's take a look here real quick. So we have the Tide Call, Cinder Spell, cast on an 8 plus, direct damage spell. The caster makes a strength 2 breath weapon attack. This may, uh, this may be cast in close combat, find the normal rules for breath weapons. Until the start of the next catch of the caster's next magic phase, any hit, any unit hit will suffer minus d6 to any move that they make, as well as being disrupted. Oh, that's going to be really important. That disrupted is really going to help you out because it takes away rank bonuses when you disrupt somebody. So that can be really helpful, especially for large units of undead against other units that are out there. 
Then we have Denizens of the Deep, cast on a 6 plus. It's a magic missile with a range of 24 inches that causes 2d6 strength 3 hits. The wizard can choose to extend the range of the spell to 40 inches. If they do so, the casting value is increased to 9 plus. Pretty useful, always handy to have a magical a magic missile attack. We have Eye of the Storm cast on 8 plus. It's an augment spell that is cast on the wizard and any unit they are with. Until the start of the caster's next magic phase, any missile fire directed from or against the wizard or the unit suffer minus one to hit. Any missile attacks that do not uh, roll to hit must first roll a d4 plus on a d6 to be able to target the unit. Any unit in base contact with the wizard or the unit suffers d6 strength 5 hits at the start of each magic phase. So I would recommend using this on a melee uh, focus unit, not so much on a range unit because you already got to worry about with the 5 plus already for zombie pirate rules. And if you put this on it, they'll have to roll a 6 up, which would be kind of rough. Then we have Watery Grave, cast on a 9+, plus. it's a hex spell the range of 18 inches. The, unit, uh, the target unit counts as moving through dangerous terrain until the start of the Naster's next magic phase. For every 4 inches the unit moves while the spell is in effect, the chance of them failing the test is increased by plus 1. The wizard can choose to extend the range of the spell to 36 inches, if he does so the casting value is increased to 12+. Plus. Pretty good! I can imagine that using that on a fast moving unit like Calvary for example, Watery Grave can really mess up that unit. Then we have Fog of the Damned, cast on a 10 plus. Uh, it is a remains in play spell. It's a hex spell with a range of 24 inches. All models and the units suffer minus one to their weapon skill and leadership. The wizard can choose to extend the range of the spell to 48 inches. If they do so, the casting value is increased at 13 plus. I can see this really being good against horde units like goblins, orcs, uh, for example, could be really useful. Probably pretty useful against humans as well. Pretty interesting spell with that minus one inch weapon skill and leadership. That's just pretty good. Then we have Stromfell's Jaws, cast on a 14 plus as a direct damage spell. Place a small template anywhere within 18 inches, it will scatter d6. Any model touched by the template takes a strength 5 hit with the multiple wounds d3 special rule. The wizard can choose to increase the power of the spell to use the large template instead. If they do so, the template scatters 2d6 inches and the casting value is increased to 17 plus. You know, I've always thought that direct, you know, magical vortex spells like this have always been kind of cool. The only problem with them is that they scatter a lot. So you gotta be kind of careful where you actually kind of put that. Now, of all the spells I've seen so far, this is one you could probably skip. And then we have Kraken's Pool, cast on a 15 plus, remains in play spell. Kraken's Pool is a magical vortex that uses a small round template. Once the template is placed, the player then nominates the direction in which the Kraken's Pool will move. To determine how many inches the template moves, roll 3d6. Any model touched by the template must pass a strength test, suffers one wound with no armor saves allowed. Any surviving models have their movement value lowered by half until the start of the caster's next magic phase. In subsequent turns, Kraken's pull travels in a random direction and moves a number of inches equal to 2d6. If a double is rolled in subsequent turns, Kraken's pull is removed. The wizard can choose to increase the power of the spell to use a large round template instead. If they do so, the casting value is 25. Uh, Stormfill's Draws and Kraken's Pool are probably the two you could probably skip in this one, in my opinion. You get a lot more usage out of Dissonance of the Deep, Eye of the Storm, Watery Grave, and Fog of the Damned, and Tide Call. Tide Call would probably be the most important one just because you can disrupt your enemy units. Very, very powerful lore. I really like it. Alright, so now that we're done with the magic system, let's talk about their magical items, the Boote of the Vampire Coast. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. So we have Kraken Fang. At 30 points, a magical weapon, additional hand weapon, the Kraken Fang gives the wielder the ice attack special rule. Eh, kind of, kind of weak for 30 points. Dirty Serpent, which is another 30 points, gives the wielder plus one strength, the armor piercing three special rule. For 30 points, that's not bad. That's actually pretty good. Armor of the Depths is magical armor at 50 points. It's medium armor. The armor of the depths gives the wearer regeneration 5 of special rule and enemies attempt to strike them suffer minus 1 to hit in close combat. That's actually pretty good. I like the idea that it's medium armor and it gives you minus 1 to hit against. The 5 of regen is nice, but of course flaming attacks can cause that to go away. But, you know, pretty fair. 50 points. With the sea dragon buckler for 20 points. The sea dragon buckler gives the wearer a 5 of armor save against missile attacks and a war save of 6 of special rule. For 20 points, that's pretty fair. I would say so. Then we have the Ebony Skulls at 35 points, an arcane item, bound spell level 4. The Ebony Skull contains the Raised Dead spell from the lore of Necromancy. Could be kind of nice to give yourself, uh, like if you got a low level wizard and you want to get that Raised Dead spell off. 35 points is kind of fair. Then we have X Parrot with 20 points. The X Parrot gives the model the Magical Resistance 1 and War Save 6 plus special rules against magical attacks. 
Eh, for 20 points, I'd say skip it. Uh, Black Eye Pearl for 20 points there. It's an enchanted item. The Black Eye Pearl gives the model the Sniper Special Rule. In addition, the bear may pick one enemy unit within line of sight at the start of each of your turns. Your opponent must reveal all magic items, hidden models, and the like that that unit might have. For 20 points, that's pretty good. But only if your characters can take, you know, powerful shooting weapons, I would say that'd be worth it. If not, I'd say skip it. Firewater, 20 points. When used only, the firewater may be used at the start of any shooting or close combat phase. The model gains a strength 3 breath weapon with a flaming attack special rule for the remainder of the phase. For 20 points, eh, pretty good. Then we have Black Buckthorn's Treasure Map for 10 points, another enchanted item. Black Thorn's uh, Black Buckthorn's Treasure Map adds plus 1 to the dice roll when determining which side to deploy on. Nah. Skip it. And then we have Skull and Crossbones. 35 points, magical standard. This unit carrying the Skull and Crossbones gains the... Uh, crossbows, rather. Gains the Terror and Vanguard special rule. For 35 points... Nah... I don't know. It, it could be worth it, I guess. It's kind of situational. And that looks like that makes up the magic items as well as magic lore. So that being said, we're going to talk about the army lists next. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the army list. So first of all, Luthor Harkon, uh, he's got 285 points. He's got a hand weapon, brace of pistols, and heavy armor. And then the slang gold for 285. He's kind of expensive for what he can do. Uh, Count Noctilus, he costs 330 points. Uh, he's got pole armor as well as full plate armor. He's got red thirst and vampiric. He may be mounted on a Necrofix Colossus for 275 points. That's pretty cool but then again really expensive for what he does no magic weapons of any sort kind of kind of basic then we got our vampire fleet animals for 260 points pretty pricey there they come with hand weapons uh, level 2 wizard who knows spills from the lore of shadow depth and deep oh so it's kind of nice so he's already at a level 2 which is nice can be upgraded to level 3 for 50 points level 4 to 35 points so I imagine it's 85 points in total you can be equipped with additional hand weapon, pole arm, pistol, and buckler. Maybe they're light armor, medium armor, heavy armor. You can also be mounted on a rotting Promethean for 45 points. Take magic items up to 100 points. Ah, pretty cool. Then we have Claustra Diaphin, the, uh, the Siren special character. She costs 185 points, really. She doesn't really do much. Van Geist costs 110 points. We talked about his crew as well. He might be worth it just to have that nice, large ethereal unit. Same thing with Scritch Half Dead for 45 points. He might be worth it too just because the crew you can take with him as well. The other guys are a little pricey for what they can do, in my opinion. Then we have our heroes. Our vampire fleet captain costs 80 points. Uh, let's see here. Looks like they are a wizard who uses just level 1 wizard, looks like. Oh, no, they're not level 1 yet. you got to pay 50 points for level 1. 35 points to make a level 2, so it looks like 85 points in total. Kind of pricey. They come with additional hand weapon, pole arm, pistol, buckler. They may wear light armor, medium armor, heavy armor. They're mounted on a rotting Promethean for 45 points and may take 50 magic items up to 50 points. Your gunnery right costs 40 points there. They can become the BSB, Battle Center Bear, for 25 points. They can take additional hand weapon, pole arm, pistol, and buckler. They can also take a handgun, a swivel gun, or a volley gun. They may wear light armor and be mounted on a rotting Promethean and may take magic points up to 50 points. Kind of interesting. You know what? It actually sounds like it might be better off just getting a vampire fleet captain, really, uh, to do most of your stuff. So, huh, interesting. So let's talk about our core units. So our zombie pirate deckhands cost 2.5 points per model. You can looks like you can get a full command and position and standard bearer for 10 points in total. They may replace one of their bucklers with an additional hand weapon for half a point or a pole arm for one point. Having that strength four could be pretty good. You don't really necessarily worry about giving them armor saves because you can just resurrect them if they die. Our zombie pirate gunners cost five points per. Uh, they come with hand weapon as well as a pistol. Your full command is 10 points for musician and standard bearer. Now they may be armed with a brace of pistols for one, replace their pistols with blunderbuster for one point, replace their pistols with grenades for free, or replace their pistols with handguns for a point. That's not bad actually. That's actually pretty good. Especially since you get so much of these guys open fire with their stuff. Not bad at all. Scurvy Dogs, which is our uh, dire wolf uh, equivalent, costs five points per. Five points to increase one to a bad dog. 
Razor Tooth Rat Swarms cost uh, 30 points per base. Not bad, because they got 8 wounds and 8 attacks apiece. Could be pretty deadly. Now our special units are our Deck Droppers. Looks like those guys cost 19 points. May replace their pistols with grenades and their pistols with handguns for free. You might want to take grenades on those, actually. But we could be pretty good there. Then our Deck Gunners cost 10 points per model. They're armed with swivel guns. The entire unit may replace their swivel guns with volley guns for 2 points per model. That's not bad. They can do a lot of damage with these guys, especially really good flank protectors as well. Our bloated corpses uh, cost 25 points per model. It says you may take one or two bloated corpses as a single special choice. Oh, it's just one person's what it is. Okay, so you can, for 50 points, it counts as a single special choice. Nah, that's kind of BS. You know, just give them the regular five, if I like normal. Anyway. Animated Husks, those are our Monsters of Victory at 30 points per model, uh, so pretty fair there. A unit of five of these guys would cost you, what, 150 points, 90 points for three? That's that's not bad. Then we have our Rotting Prometheans, which are our Monstrous Beasts for 45 points per model. This is in the entire maybe upgraded with Gunnery Mobs for five points per model. Pretty cool there. Then we have our Carronade, which is our Cannon, costs 85 points for that. Our Motor costs 100 points for that for our special unit choices. What else do we got? We also got our rare units, our Depth Guard. Now, yeah, that's right. these are the guys who are the, Zal the Vampiric Infantry. They have two hand weapons as well as full plate armor. So they got four armor for our armor save. Full command costs 30 points. Can have a magic standard worth of 35 points. The entire unit may replace their hand weapons with pull arms for two points. So 26 points for halberds makes them strength six. Pretty cool. That's actually pretty cool. good. Our Sirens cost 70 points a piece. Yeah, pretty good there. Our Rotting Leviathan Monster. Looks like it also has five zombie gunners on the back of it. Costs 250 points for that. That's pretty good. And our Necrofix Colossus is a 270 points for that one. Pretty fair there. And Queen Bess, that huge cannon, costs 250 points for that. That's pretty cool as well. So yeah, that pretty much makes up the zombie pirates of the Vampire Coast Army list. So in all, uh, this is actually a pretty interesting uh, army list you got here with an army product here. Like once again, I really love the fact that this is a rule system that was all done for free. So I really love the price on it. You can't beat free, which is all kinds of awesome as well. But to be honest though, it's a little underwhelming for some of the stuff that's inside of it. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more variety of units inside. It just seems like it's kind of limited in that sense. The special characters aren't all that special. Uh, they're just kind of basic actually, all things considered. But at the same time though, you do have some pretty interesting things in this as as well i would definitely like to have seen like zombie like like not zombie pirates i'm sorry uh vampire pirates if you look at this character here so it's not vampires in the back you could have some like some vampire pirates which would be kind of cool kind of unit to add in there as well but at the same time though i could see what they're trying to go with with some of the things they're doing here it uh, looks like a lot of the artwork looks like it's from warhammer total war if i remember correctly i think i've seen that kind of artwork before so it looks like they're taking units from that game as well as from dreadfleet and translating them to this as well but then again, like I said, you really can't complain about it because the rules are absolutely free, so you're not paying for it. So that's one thing to take into consideration. The only issue I would think about making an army out of the zombie, zombie pirates is that it would probably be extremely expensive. A lot of the units have really low point values, which means you need to buy a lot of miniatures in order to fulfill like a 3,000 point army, for example. That would actually be quite expensive for that. But at the same time, though, they do have some really cool game mechanics. I like the idea that these guys all pretty much have pistols and handguns that they can use. I think that's very, very cool as well. I also really like the Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, the Curse of the Black Pearl type vibe you get off of these units with undead, uh, undead and vampiric uh, pirates, which is like taking the best of taking the undead and pirates and then making them together, which sounds really cool. So yeah, this is pretty interesting. Um, I do think that the pirates of Sartosa, for example, have a, better, a little bit better, more fleshed out units than the, than the zombie pirates do. 
But at the same time, though, if you're looking for a way to play out your undead uh, undead part uh, needs on the tabletop, highly suggest giving this army a go. Just realize it could be pretty pricey because you might have to buy a lot of models if you decide to do so. So that's good for those of you guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. You guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good for listening, guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.